Hi, I'm Fabi from Bow Woodworks and I want to follow the example from Brad Rodriguez from Fix This Build That and make a confession. I have a fairly organized workshop, but here in my C&C room it's just a mess and this is the worst part of it. Here's the laptop which controls the CNC. I have a piece of plywood that acts as a tabletop. Here are these old IKEA drawer cases, a sewing machine down here, and I just cram stuff under it, on top of it. It's a mess. I have even loose cables flying around. I mean, if this cable plugs out, I have a problem. The CNC is not running anymore. So I want to clean this up and make a nice car today. Something like this. Ooh, nice. All right, wait, 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 let's go back. Here's the mess, and now I'm gonna show you how I cleaned it up. I've designed a complete project in SketchUp and then exported it into VCarve, which is my CAM software where I could generate all the tool paths. Then from VCarve, I exported um, the G code for the Mach 4 program, which is the program that actually controls the CNC. For the material, I choose 15 millimeter birch plywood. These sheets come in one meter 50 by three meters and I cut them in half so I can easily transport them down here into my workshop. All right, let's load up the CNC. Don't just stay there, help me. There you go. Depending on the grades of plywood you get, you have a higher grade side and a lower grade side. And you can also get a plywood that has high grade sides on both sides. But here I have a low grade side, which, which is this side, and it has these patches in it. And the higher grade side is facing down. The show face of my parts is the other side. So this side will be not visible on the final piece. Another thing you might want to consider when choosing the side of plywood you put on your CNC is the type of bit you use. This is the bit I've usually used with plywood. It's a two flute up spiral bit, which means the spiral is facing up. When it rotates, it lifts the fibers up. So usually this has a tendency to have more tear out on the top than on the bottom. And that's why I put the show face down but you can also get something that's called a compression bit. And this is a pretty fancy compression bit because it has this nice looking long life coating on it. I will use this bit and yeah, and tell you how it performs. This bit has two spirals. So it has an up facing spiral at the bottom and a down facing spiral at the top, which means it has no tear out on the bottom and the top. So you can use both sides of the plywood as show face if you want to. For bigger sheets of ply, I like to use screws to hold the plywood in place as a work holding. I know you can run with the bit into a screw and then the bit is pretty much messed up, but I place them at the very edge and in my file I leave a 10 millimeter strip around which accounts for the screws. All right, the toolpath for sheet number one is loaded into Mark IV, and now let's go. Everything went well until, oh no, well, it looks like I overcooked it a little bit for the bit. The bit broke, so now I have to go back to the two flute up spiral bit. All right, the first sheet is done. Now I will unscrew it and clean out the sawdust here and then use the multi-cutter tool to get rid of the tabs. All right, the tabs are removed. Quality management is paying me a visit and now comes a pretty satisfying part. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Next cheat. Achtung. All right, same story here. I will screw it down and then, yeah, route it out. Okay, here are all the draw fronts now. I've lined them up in order because I want to have a nice continuous engraving all over the fronts. And here I have a problem. And the question is, how do I hold these in place? I have them lined up, but as you can see, yeah, the plywood is bent a little. I cannot use traditional work holding from the top because the V bit here is gonna cover pretty much the whole surface. So I came up with a solution and I hope it will work. I don't know if it does. I do have a stop block on the other side as well. And here I will now press it down, put the stop against it, and then screw it tight. And I hope this creates here enough friction to hold it down. I don't know, it's not the most professional way to hold it in place, but I think it'll do. For the engraving, I will use the 60 degree V groove bit. Yeah, let's fire it up. All right, the work holding worked fairly well. All the lines here have an even thickness and the plywood is still down. So yeah, worked nice. I will now clean up the remaining waste of the tabs here on the router table with a flush trim bit. And if you want to build a router table yourself, check out the videos I have. I have a two part video series about the router table and the fence, how you can build it yourself. And I think you will like it. time now we'll apply a little bit of glue put the pieces together hold them with the clamps and drive in a, a few screws from the back let's go this one needs a little persuasion there we go One thing I really like about the combination of CNC joinery and parallel clamps is the fact that it ends up square almost all the time, as you can see here. Dead on. The drawer runners also get glued in place here and I will immediately check them for square. looking good and I want to reinforce it a little bit so where the casters will go there's more meat to it and it won't bend or bone me. I use a thin piece of scrap to set it evenly here and here and then just screw them down. <laughs> well these screws are way too short. Next try longer screw. Yeah that's better. The glue up for the drawer is pretty much the same as for the cabinet. Glue in the joints and then some screws from the back and the bottom so you, where you won't see them. Again, it's pretty cool with the self squaring construction of the drawer. I do check it for square, but usually they end up square and it's just fine.
The glue is dry now on the drawers as well as the cabinet. I will now give it a quick 220 grit sanding, break the edges with the hand plane and then apply some finish. While you watch me sand, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a new video. For the finish I choose Osmo Top Oil or Osmo Hard Wax or Poly X depending on where you live it has another name. I really like this hand pad to apply the oil, it makes it super fast and convenient, you don't get it on your hands and stuff, it doesn't stick to it, so yeah, it's just nice. Isn't it nice how the grain pops here on these plywood edges? The casters are on and here I have now two threaded inserts and this height adjustable monitor arm goes on here with two star knobs just like that and now I can easily adjust it. To actually hold the monitor in place I bought this swivel arm from the big online store with A and I will screw it here and then the monitor goes on here and then I can swivel it out and in a little bit so I can adjust it where I want it to be. The penultimate task now is cleaning up that mess and then bring in the card and the last step is get it connected to the CNC and everything and yeah I'm super pumped, we're so close now. Of course the drawers now need some drawer pulls, I got these online and I kind of like them. <coughs> to hold this cover here in place where the computer will go, I've installed some magnets here and a small piece of scrap wood that will sit on top of here and now I can put it in place. And if I need to do something on the computer or plug in the cable, something like that, I can remove it just like this. Oh boy, that's perfect. Okay, let's shove all these cables in here and get them to connect to the computer. Here it is! I'm super super happy how it turned out. I really like it. I can now work nicely on the CNC. I don't have the sewing machine garbage set up anymore here. I now have the monitor here and all the drawers I can fill with junk, which I already did. But here you see there's one problem with the drawers. Now the sides to the runners, there's too much space. And this way when you pull it all the way out, they kind of fall out by themselves. I can fix this now by screwing something on the sides here, which should, should align them straight when I pull them out. But I really like how the pattern turned out here. I thought about spraying it in black and then sanding over it so the lines will get black, but I think this is more, more natural and looks kind of nice as well. This card you can pretty much use for your home office setup. It's mobile, if you don't have enough space you can just 
pull it somewhere in the corner and when you have to work you just pull it out and have everything plugged in and there's just one cord running to the plug. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel and activate the bell as well so you won't miss a new video. I have tons of projects already planned, a couple are already filmed and they will be released very, very soon. Now, if you want to support what I do, the best way is to go over to the store and pick up a starter kit or a shooting board. This really helps me out. Now, thank you so much and see you in the next video.